It is known that COVID-19 attacks the lungs, but what doctors and scientists are also trying to figure out is how it impacts the heart. I'm about to speak remotely to cardiac electrophysiologist, Dr. Paul Friedman from the Mayo Clinic to get his perspective on the matter. Then I'm gonna be heading down to see one of GE Healthcare's diagnostic cardiology leaders, Mark Langer. He's actually gonna show me around an electrocardiogram or ECG, also known as an EKG. Dr. Friedman, hi, it's a, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Um, just to start with, what is the relationship between COVID-19 symptoms and the heart? For most people who get a COVID infection, their symptoms will be fever, cough, shortness of breath. But there are a minority who will get symptoms that are mimic the heart attack exactly. And so you really have to go to the emergency room and medical tests need to be done to sort it out. A person then presents himself on an emergency room with either symptoms of COVID-19, uh, cough, fever, etc., or presenting themselves with something that mimics a heart attack or could be a heart attack, then what happens? Usually the ECG or electrocardiogram is the first test we get. And the reason we get that test first is that it's very easy to do. It, it, it can be applied and takes 10 seconds to get. It doesn't require as much specialized training to obtain the information. Um, and then once that's uh, obtained, we immediately get a lot of information about the heart. Then, depending on those findings, an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, in which sound waves are beamed into the heart, and it creates a picture of the heart, and you can see the heart beating, provides information about the strength of the heart pump, whether the valves are, are uh, appropriately functioning, or whether there's another um, visible mechanical problem affecting the heart. What are you looking for in that, um, in that ultrasound that will raise a red flag to then take a, a more sort of invasive course of action with a patient? It may show that the heart pump is weak so that you know that um, you have to be thoughtful about which medicines you give. And if someone is having fluid in their lungs, it may be because the heart pump isn't pumping strong enough. So there's a, a long list of possible diagnoses that you may see with that. And then based on those findings, um, you may then select medications or interventions depending on what specific findings there are. The ECG can actually be used to detect whether those medicines are having a positive or a harmful effect on an individual. Can you just talk me through that? Once someone has COVID and we decide to start treatment, then a secondary issue, which uh, will affect roughly 1% of people, but again, when you're treating a million people, that's 10,000 patients, is that some of the medicines themselves can cause life-threatening heart rhythm disorders called torsade de point, where instead of causing a normal coordinated contraction, the electrical signals become chaotic, they quiver and the heart stops pumping and the person collapses. Not common, but terribly important to know if someone's at risk for that. So an EKG, purely from the standpoint of someone who, they have COVID and you're gonna start treatment with medicines like azithromax and hydrochloroquine or other medicines that are being commonly used, which are known to potentially impact the heart's rhythm, you check the ECG to make sure the heart rhythm is okay and that they have enough reserve to safely take those medicines. ECGs are obviously critical when it comes to patients who have some form of underlying cardio problem. Correct. ECGs can tell you about the rhythm of the heart, of course. It can tell you about uh, some, some th information about the dimensions of the heart, the size of the, of the heart. And of course, it can tell you if you have a problem like having a heart attack, uh, for example. These are where you put your sensors, um, and they pick up the electrical signal in various dimensions across the heart. Um, and then they have some sensors right across the left side uh, where the heart is located. Uh, and then if you look at the ECG itself, you see this waveform. There's a, a small piece of the waveform that is the top part of the heart contracting. Uh, and then the large spike that you see, that's the ventricle contracting. It's a bigger part of the heart, so it makes more electrical energy. Uh, and then at the end, you have a small wave again, and that's the heart repolarizing to have another heartbeat. So, Dr. Freeman, is there a possibility that an ECG could be used to diagnose COVID-19 one day? And if that is a possibility, what would that mean? Animal research from 20 years ago demonstrated was that if you were to infect an animal with a coronavirus, you start to see ECG changes within days. Now, those changes are not clinically important most of the time, meaning the person or the animal wouldn't even know they're having those changes. But one of the things we're wondering is, 
can we use that to identify that someone has a COVID infection? The answer to that right now with a standard ECG is no, you cannot use the ECG, but we are doing a test where we are partnering with hospitals from around the world and with a number of manufacturers to collect a lot of ECGs from patients with COVID infection to see if we apply artificial intelligence, a special form of processing of the ECGs, if we can use the ECG for a diagnostic test. And what that could mean is that in a doctor's office, or in many cases, even at home, someone could do a quick, painless 30-second test to determine whether or not COVID is present. On the 24th of April 2020, the FDA cautioned of serious heart rhythm problems in COVID-19 patients treated with hydroxychloroquine. What's your reaction to that? It's important to underscore the fact that the FDA is not saying don't use these medications. What they're saying is, be smart and be careful. Check an ECG, see if someone is at heightened risk for problems, and then follow up with another measurement. Again, recording the heart's electrical signals can determine whether someone can safely receive these medications. Dr. Paul Friedman, fascinating insights. Thank you.